Talk to us about the lack of clarity or some sort of guidance that we got from the Federal Reserve. It wasn't as much as the market was hoping. Do you think more guidance is needed from Fed Chair Powell? I do think some more guidance is needed. I think they took a little bit of a step uh, with respect to the asset purchases, but I think it was small and there's still some vagueness about the interest rate itself. So I think the, the markets are looking for a little more clarity about the forward guidance, and I, I hope they do that going forward or slip it in. But, but so far, I think it's, it's been very small, and I, I hope it could be larger. Do you think that they that the Fed right now that the members there that they feel maybe a little constrained in making any sort of uh, clearer guidance than they would normally make? Not only given the pandemic and some of the uncertainties around the economy, but just the fact that the expectation of markets has changed uh, quite a bit here over the last couple of years. It has changed, and I think you saw their responding to that last uh, March, April, in a reasonable way. But at the same time, they could be indicating where they're going. And I just give an example. If you look out a couple years, uh, their publication came out yesterday. They have that interest rate uh, at, a, at a, uh, you know between zero and 0.25, even though the inflation rate will be two. That's their forecast, and unemployment below four. So if you just go back a year ago, the same conditions they had an interest rate over two percent. So that's quite a change, and I think that needs to be clarified a little bit. It's it's bit of an inconsistency, and I think people are. Wondering what does that mean? Some of the questions in the bond market that you just referred to are related to that. Professor Taylor, I, I want to ask you about cryptocurrencies, this boom that we are seeing. Does it worry you? It doesn't really worry me. I think it's, it's a sign that people are looking for an alternative. I think at the same time, you've seen the central banks get into the act to try to uh, add a little clarity to this aspect as well, too. But I think this is this is technology moving. I think uh, you know Facebook is they've changed a little bit from their Libra to the DM they call it, uh, responding. And so I think you're you're seeing the changes which we need. I, it doesn't concern me. I think it's a it's a sign of our uh, progress technologically, uh, delivering a better system for people. Do you think the dollar should ever go digital? Do you, what do you make of the dollar's continued weakness over the course of the year? Well, I think the dollar is still the global currency in many respects. I think the weakness you see from time to time has to do with the policies. We just mentioned uh, a minute ago about how the asset purchases, $120 billion a month, uh, were clarified a little bit. It wasn't clarified on the downside, clarified on the upside. And, and this interest rate, uh, you know, going out to 22, 23 now at a very low rate without much description. I think that's those are the things that uh, are, are concerns about the dollar, but uh, they're their own concerns as well for the state of the economy. Again, a little clarity would be better. There's no reason not to going forward to provide a little bit of that. Even the current situation, you can do what's important currently at the same time, give some guidance to the markets about where you're going in the next next year or two. Given where we are right now with uh, benchmark rates and the expectation that they're pretty much going to stay where they are uh, for the next couple of years, there was always that fear as we sort of made that descent to where we are today, this fear uh, that by the Fed allowing this to occur, that this would sort of create uh, that reach for yield amongst investors. And there was the fear that that would in turn sort of maybe create some sort of bubble, some sort of systemic risk out there. So far, that has not really occurred. The, each, the reach for yield has occurred, but some of the systemic issues that people feared hasn't necessarily shown up. Um, do you worry that an, that an extension of this low rate environment for much longer would eventually lead to any real systemic risk? Yeah, I think it, I think it will, unless there's some clarity about how long it will last. Uh, it used to do that. You know, the Fed used to be uh, a little more clear about where it was going down the road. Uh, now it's less clear. Yes, they're saying it's going to be, you know, you know, between zero and 0.25 for the most part out to 2023. But, but at the same time, their forecast is pretty good out that far. It's, you know, the unemployment rate below four, uh, inflation around two. That's kind of where they're where they want to be. So why is the interest rate still projected to be so low. I, I think there's some inconsistency there. They may be worried about other things they're not saying, but uh, that's that, I think, is the concern going forward. And that can come anytime. We don't know exactly when it will come, but I, it's a concern to me. And I, I think it'd be better off if there was, if there was more, more forward guidance, put it that way, about what's happening. 
what about fiscal policy? That is something that Jerome Powell pushed not just yesterday, but has really for the duration of this pandemic. And, and we're getting news today that one Republican senator is pushing as part of a fiscal aid package uh, let, uh, wording that would terminate the Fed's facilities, emergency facilities that it has put into place. Is that a mistake or can fiscal really carry the mantle from here? No, I think I think the uh, action of Secretary Mnuchin uh, was was right at this point and uh, took took the right action. There, I know there was some dispute about that. There's still some dispute, but I think let's clarify what the policy is. And this this additional you know 500 billion plus c can be used as part of the current stimulus package, but it would be better at the same time the Fed was clear. Then we could have a better package, a more package which is aimed at, at really what we need to have in the country, uh, rather than just uh, guessing about what the Fed will do. So that 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 clarity is important. Also, I might add, there would be nothing wrong when this stimulus package is passed to say a little bit about what's happening down the road with fiscal policy. There's very little discussion about that. The focus is all on the 900 billion or whatever it happens to be but not where we'll be a year from now. And we have a vaccine that's coming uh, down the road. It looks promising. Uh, that will be good for the economy if it all works. And so that the, the policy actions should take that into account and at least be thinking about that. And I think being more explicit as well. I want to ask you, of course, Professor, that your Taylor rule doesn't just guide the Fed, but it guides global central banks. And we are seeing central banks around the world moving more in lockstep with fiscal policy. We've seen it from the Bank of England today. You're seeing Europe finally passing off on that enormous fiscal spending that they're going to tailor towards green spending in particular, but moving very much in concert with the ECB. What do you make of policymakers around the world, central bank action around the world? Well, I think the, the so-called Taylor Rule has, uh, has delivered uh, good performance when it's been used and when they've deviated from too much. It's not been so good. There's evidence of that. This is not rocket science, uh, so you can't be terribly precise, but you can be more precise. I think the danger at this point, if you, if you lock in too much a fiscal monetary connection, that you really are building on each other in a way that's not stable. It would be better if the central banks were clear, clear uh, statements, had clear statements of what they're doing, and then the fiscal authorities with the additional powers they have could make the right decision. So I think that that has worked in the past, and it can work now going forward. Again, I think the, the vaccine is, a, is changing things more rapidly than we thought, let's face it, and uh, the fiscal and monetary policy should take that into account. Uh, well, of course, we're also getting into questions about whether monetary policy should do many other things, income distribution, environment, which they have not done in the past, but that's becoming a part of the conversation as well.